Hey guys, welcome back to another Premiere Pro CC tutorial. I'm your host, Gilly Gill. Today we're going to talk about tools. Not like tool bag, but tool, like tools. Yeah, tools. Is it tools? Yeah. T hey, tools. No. Yeah, tools. Yeah. Okay, so let's be honest, there isn't a ton of tools in Premiere Pro. Not as much as like Photoshop or Illustrator, but the tools that are within Premiere are super useful and you're gonna use them a lot, honestly. So let's not waste any time, let's jump right in. The first tool that I think you guys are gonna be using the most is the Selection Tool. The Selection Tool Keyboard Shortcut V is what you're gonna use to grab a hold of things. You're gonna be grabbing it to move, you're gonna grab it to trim the clips. It's a selection tool. It's what you use to grab things. It's a selection tool. You select with it. Now there's other ways to make selections within the timeline, and that is the very next tool, and that's the Track Select Forward. So let's say you have multiple clips, and just for the sake of demonstration, I'm gonna put a bunch in here. That's good. Now let's say we wanna add a clip in between this one and the next clip. Now, we could drag a selection around these clips and move them, or we could use the Track Select Forward tool. And what the Track Select Forward tool does is wherever you click in the timeline, it's going to select all of the clips after that point, whether it's on video track one, two, or three, and that goes for audio as well. So you're making a mass selection from that point forward in the timeline. So we can move all those things independently and we can drop another clip in between. You see this little arrow in the corner? That means there's another tool hiding back there. You just click and hold and you can see the track select backwards. So much like track select forwards, it's going to select everything backwards from the point where you click. Okay, directly below that is the Ripple Edit Tool. So basically the Ripple Edit Tool is a sort of magnetic way of moving clips around in the timeline. So take a look at the clip here, 37. We wanna extend that clip, but normally if we used the Selection Tool and we extend that clip, we can't. It's like blocking us. And the same way if we wanna take this other clip backwards, we can't do that. It's kinda like the clips are, are stuck in that way. You can't cross another clip. Now we can bring that into itself so we can shorten that clip and create a gap, but that's not what we wanna do. So grab the ripple edit tool and see what happens. What, what happens when we go towards that clip now, we can see that we can A, move that way, and when we extend that clip, it pushes every other clip past it out. Does that make sense? <laughs> Instead of blocking you from extending that clip, what Ripple Edit is doing is saying, we want to push this clip this much farther and everything else past is gonna, is gonna ripple. It's gonna have a ripple effect, it's gonna ripple. Yeah. So the Ripple tool has that little arrow in the bottom corner. So we also have the Rolling Edit tool under there. What the Rolling Edit tool is going to do, let's zoom in. So let's say we want to shorten the beginning of this clip and lengthen the end of this one. The Ripple tool would just keep the beginning of this clip and extend this one. Think about the rolling edit tool as like a pulley system. If you got two pulleys and you pull on one, this other one's gonna move with it. So instead of taking the selection tool and dragging this clip forward to elongate this clip, we can use the rolling edit tool to do that in one click. Okay, the next one is one of my favorites and it's really useful for those of you who like to do like slow motion and speed ramping, stuff like that. Now this isn't officially a speed ramping tool, but it does change the rate at which this clip will play. So grab the rate stretch tool. We're gonna go all the way to the end and we are going to cut just the end of that. Now with the rate stretch tool, what's gonna happen is we are going to take just this part of the footage and stretch it out. We have not changed the content of that clip. All we've done is stretch it out more over time. And when you stretch out a clip over time, you're essentially slowing it down. If we play this clip back, you'll see that it's now 42.77% slower. But you wanna be really careful when using the rate stretch tool because depending on your frame rate, if you stretch a clip out too far, it's gonna look really weird like this.
you can just tell that it's kind of stepping and it's super duper slow-mo an unnatural 20% of normal speed. Not the ideal way to slow-mo a clip, but it can work in a pinch. Okay, next up is the slip tool. The keyboard shortcut for that is Y. The slip tool is really cool. So think about this clip right here as a container. And the film strip is stretched well beyond that container between the original starting and stopping of the clip. The best way to describe the slip tool is to imagine that clip as like a little window and the original film strip is stretched out, you know, well past and before the window. The slip tool will allow us to grab the end of that clip and pull it while the window remains the same. Watch. So the end of this clip shows Mango about to do something, well, you'll see. The clip ends before we actually see that. So we need to change within this little box what parts of our clip are showing. We're just gonna click and drag to the left and you can see our program monitor changes a bit. And what you're seeing here is the upper left is the very beginning of the clip. The larger left side is our new end point and the right side is our new out point. So let's play that back now. Oh my. So you can see we were able to slip the original clip within its window forward in time so that we could see the action. This is especially useful if you've like already timed out your clips to the music and you just, you missed a part of the action and you just need to shove it over a little bit. The slip tool is the one to use. Next is the slide tool. The slide tool is gonna let you grab that window and attach what's to the left and to the right. Unlike the rolling edit tool, this is gonna use both the in and out cuts of this clip and adjust it that way. Okay, so the pen tool is pretty much like we've seen in any other Adobe program. You can use the pen tool to draw Bezier shapes. So we'll grab the pen tool and let's draw a shape around the bird. Whoops, I missed his tail. So now we have this graphic that's shown up in the timeline and we can adjust that graphic to do pretty much whatever we want. Not sure where I'm going with that, but you can draw shapes around things and shapes are cool, so yeah. I honestly don't use pen tool very often. I'll create all my graphics in Photoshop. Below the pen tool are your other shape options, which are rectangle, clear enough, you can draw rectangles. And the ellipse tool, Obviously, you can draw circles. You might use drawing shapes for creating graphics, um, lower thirds, or lower thirds, or um, titles, or some other thing that I never use, so. Next up is the hand tool. The hand tool pretty much lets you grab a hold of the timeline without the fear of making any selections. You can just grab the timeline and move up and down the timeline. But I honestly just prefer scrolling up and down to maneuver the timeline that way. The other tool nested behind the hand is the zoom tool. And again, I don't usually use the zoom tool because I will always use plus and minus. But with the zoom tool selected, you can click to zoom in, hold alt, or option and click to zoom out. And the last stop on the tool train is the type tool. Grab hold of the type tool, go up to the program monitor, start typing cool things, and uh, it'll show up on screen, especially your spelling mistakes. <laughs> if you'll notice in the timeline, when you make text onto the program monitor, it creates a text layer down in the timeline. And really quickly, if you wanted to change that text, all you do is go up to Effect Controls, scroll down a bit within the Effect Controls, and you can change things like the font, you can change the size, the style, the alignment, all the kerning and spacing and superscript, all that stuff. Anything pertaining to changing a property about the text can be found in the Effects panel. Underneath the type tool is the vertical type tool and which pretty much is the same thing except for the text will appear vertical. So yeah, that's pretty much all the tools within Premiere Pro CC of which you can use to expedite your workflow. I personally don't use all of the tools. My most common tools are the selection, the slip, the rate stretch, forward select tool, track select, forward track select, 
All of those are my most favorite tools. All the other ones I pretty much have a keyboard shortcut for. Anyway, I hope this was helpful to you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you aren't with notifications on, and I will see you on the next one.